the Upanishad series. Maujud, the impeccable man of trust. This is a Sufi story. Maujud means literally one who is available. The present moment. And here the story relates to a person whose name was Maujud. He is available to the moment and through him the Sufis has narrated what is the ultimate in trust. There was once a man named Maujud. He lived in a town where he had obtained the post of a small official and it seemed that he would end his day as inspector of weights and measure in a high position. One day he was walking through the gardens of an ancient building near his home when Khizr salam, the mysterious guide of Sufis, appeared to him. He was dressed in shimmering green. Green is the color of Khizr salam. Green is the color which is omnipresent. The entire nature reflects in shimmering green. His said to Maujud, O man of bright prospect, leave your work and meet me at the riverside in three days' time. Saying this, he disappeared. Now someone comes and tells you that you want to give it a second thought. You will discuss it with the family members. But Mojud did nothing like this. He went to his superiors in the place of the work and told them that he had to leave. Everyone in the town soon heard of this and they said, poor Maju, he has become mad. But there were many other candidates looking for that job. So soon they forgot about him. And then on the appointed day, Maujud met Khizr al-Islam. Khizr told him, tear your clothes and throw yourself in the stream. Perhaps someone may save him. First he tells Maujud, leave your job and meet me in three days time. Thereafter, again in that lonely place where there was no one to hear, in a state of solitude, Maujud tells him, tear your clothes and throw yourself into the stream. Perhaps someone may save you. You may find it crazy. Without knowing, I throw myself into the river, in the stream, and then wait for someone to come and protect me. What kind of craziness is this? 
but Mahjood did so, even though he wondered if he had gone mad. Since he could swim, he did not drown. Instead, he drifted a long way before a fisherman hauled him into his boat, saying, You foolish man, the current is strong. What are you trying to do? Mahjood replied, I don't really know. I don't really know. You are mad, said the fisherman, but I'll take you into my reed hut by the river yonder and we shall see what can be done for you. When the fisherman discovered that Mahjood was well spoken, he was learned. So he learned from him how to read and write. In exchange, Mahjood was given food and he helped the fisherman with his work. Few months passed. When it was almost as if Mahjood was going to settle, Khizr salam again appeared. But this time he appeared at the foot of the bed and said, get up and leave this fisherman. The way Khizr salam appeared to Mahjood, first he met in a lonely place in a garden near his house. And now he appears while Mahjood was sleeping on the bed and he appeared this time at the foot of the bed. If the person stands on the side of the head then he may not be, you may not be able to see him. The moment someone stands by the side of the foot, you will be able to see him. So after few months, when Mahjood was almost settling with the fisherman, Khizr again appeared this time at the foot of Mahjood bed and said, get up and leave this fisherman. You will be provided for. Mahjood immediately quit the hut, dressed as a fisherman and wandered about until he came to a highway. As the dawn was breaking, he saw a farmer on a donkey on his way to the market. Do you seek the work? asked the farmer. Because I need a man to help me bring back some purchases that I am going to make in the market. Mahjood followed him. He worked for the farmer for nearly two years by which time he learned a great deal about the agriculture, but little else. One afternoon he was bailing wool. Khizr salam appeared to him again and said, leave that work and walk to the city of Mosul and use your savings to become a skin merchant. The moment Mahjood is trying to settle, Khizr salam appears and disturbs him.
One afternoon when he was wheeling wool, Khizr appeared to him and said, Leave this work and walk to the city of Mosul and use your savings to become a skin merchant. Majud obeyed. In Mosul he became known as a skin merchant and he never saw Khizr al-Islam. While he piled his trade for three years, he had saved quite a large sum of money and now he was thinking of buying a house to settle. And this is the time when Khizru has to appear. So while he was thinking of buying a house, Khizr appeared and said, Give me your money, walk out of this town, as far as the distant land in Samarkand, and work for the grocer there. This time Khizra said, Give me your money, walk out of this town, as far as the distant Samarkand, and work for a grocer there. Majud again did so. Presently he began to show undoubted signs of illumination. He healed the sick, served his fellow men in the shop during his spare time and his knowledge of the mysterious became deeper and deeper. His knowledge of the mysteries of the unknown became deeper and deeper. Clerics, philosophers and others visited him and asked, Under whom did you study? Under whom did you study? Everyone asked. It is difficult to say, said Maujud. His disciple asked, how did you start your career? At this, Maujud said, as a small official, and then you gave it up to devote yourself for self-mortification. The disciples inquired. No, I just gave it up. They did not understand him. People approached him to write the story of his life. What have you been in your life? They said. I jumped into the river, became a fisherman, then walked out of the reed hut in the middle of the night, imagine in the middle of the night, he walked out of the reed hut. After that I became a farm hand. While I was wailing wool, I changed and went to Mosul, where I became a skin merchant. I saved some money there, but gave it away. Then I walked to Samarkand, where I worked for a grocer, and this is where I am now. But this impeccable, this inexplicable behavior throws no light upon your strange gifts and wonderful examples, said the biographer. But this is so, said Majud. This is so. So the biographer constructed for Majud a wonderful and exciting story as they normally do. Because all saints must have their story 
and this story must be in accordance with the appetite of the listener, not with the realities of life. And nobody is allowed to speak of his directly. That is why this story is not true. It is a representation of a life. This is the real life of the greatest Sufis. This is a story. One of the greatest stories. It has that flavor that only a Sufi story can have. It is incomparable. If you can understand this story, you will understand the very secret of religion. If you cannot understand this, you will not be able to understand the religion at all. This belongs to the very foundation of religious consciousness. Without it, there can be no religious transformation. So listen to this story as attentively as possible. Let this story sink into your very being. This story opens a door. I will explain this story. This story can open a door. It can become a radical change in your life that you may never be the same again. But this story has to be understood very minutely, very carefully, very lovingly, because it is a strange tale. It is not just a story. Remember, Sufi stories are not just stories. They are not to entertain you. They are not to just give you an occupation. They are teaching devices. They indicate something. They show something. They point to something precious. In fact, they are pointers. They are arrows towards the unknown. Fingers pointing to the moon. And remember the saying of the Sufis, Do not bite my finger. Look where I am pointing. It is, a very, it is very easy to be entertained by such stories. But that is not their purpose. Then you will miss the point. They are the reflections of the beyond. They say that which cannot be said. They try to express that which is inexpressible. They are not about the mundane world. They bring to the innermost search for truth. They belong to the innermost search for truth. They belong to the center of your being. They are indeed beautiful devices. If you simply pay attention, if you meditate on this story, parallel to this story, something else will start revealing itself in your being. The story is on one plane, but the revelation happens on another plane, parallel to it. Unless you start tasting that parallel revelation, remember you have missed the point. And to miss the point is very easy. Intelligence is needed to miss the point. Any stupid person can do it, but to understand it will require great intelligence. So pull yourself together. Become integrated for these few moments. Listen as totally as possible. 
just become the airs, be there. Something of immense value is being imparted as a story. You recall the story in which Lewis Carroll's through the looking glass, there comes this beautiful passage. The queen said to Alice, who was standing in the world, she could not believe. I dare say, you have not had much practice. Why sometimes I believed as many as six impossible things before the breakfast. Yes, that is the secret of this story. Lewis Carroll is imparting something immensely valuable there. The secret of the story is the art of... The secret of the story is the art of believing, the art of trusting. The art of saying yes to the existence, saying yes to the unknown and unknowable. Believing is impossible. The impossible becomes possible. How does it happen? In fact, things are impossible only because you do not have the courage to believe. Each thought can become a thing. And all that happens inside the consciousness can create its reality outside. All that happens outside has to happen first inside. The seed is absorbed inside and the tree shows outside. If you have the believing heart, nothing is impossible. Even God is not impossible. God is not impossible then.